equipped with a 400 amp star fuse. However, this fuse has been relocated to a cabinet just above the fuel tank on the left side of the locomotive. Eventually, this is where the inverter equipment will be located for EMD's new main generator start system. Let's take a look at a few of these circuit breakers. Wheel flange rail loop can be used to disable the flange loop system for 15 minutes and to reset the system. ABICO air brake in cutout prevents dropping out of the air brake system computer due to low battery voltage when starting. This is a reset breaker only. Cab display computer sometimes labeled ICE. This breaker protects the ICE computer and cab displays. Air brake. This is the power supply breaker for the EPIC air brake system. TCC1 comp protects the traction inverter number one computer. TCC2 comp protects the traction inverter number two computer. Turbo must be on to operate the turbo auxiliary oil pump immediately after engine startup and shutdown. Do not turn this breaker off. Computer control. Power supply for the locomotive control computer. All the diesel engine systems are tied in with this computer. Do not turn this breaker off. Ground relay cutout switch. Disables ground relay protection on the locomotive. Only authorized maintenance personnel may operate this switch when performing tests. Parking brake. Power supply for the electric parking brake. Now that we've covered some of the new components and features of this locomotive, let's talk about operation of the SD80 Mac. We've already covered the operation of the electric parking brake. But what if the locomotive is shut down? Well, as long as the batteries are okay, just make sure the parking brake circuit breaker is on, and then just operate the parking brake switch. But what if the batteries are dead? Well, use the crank. Let's go down and take a look. To apply the parking brake manually, first, make sure the parking brake circuit breaker is off. Then, Simply remove the crank from its storage holder, insert the crank in the socket, and crank away. The crank is turned clockwise to apply and counterclockwise to release. The crank is very easy to turn, but it does take a lot of turns of the crank to fully apply or release. Make sure you crank the handle as far as it will go, and then return the crank to its storage holder. Next, engine start procedures except for checking the 400 amp start fuse, which is outside on the left side of the locomotive, and checking the crankcase pressure reset device, engine starting procedures are handled entirely inside the kit. First, check the controls. Make sure the reverser is in neutral and removed. On the control stand, make sure the generator field switch is off, engine run switch is off, and the control and fuel pump switch is on. Next, check the isolation switch on the engine control panel. Make sure it's in the start, stop, isolate position. Then, in the switch and circuit breaker cabinet, close the battery knife switch. Make sure the ground relay cutout switch is closed and that the auxiliary generator circuit breaker is on. Turn on all the circuit breakers in the black area as well as the turbo and computer control circuit breakers. Then, place the fuel injection switch in the run position. Now you're ready to start the engine. Push the engine start button and hold for about two to three seconds. The locomotive's computer will automatically prime the fuel system. Then, it will sound an alarm in the engine room to warn that a cranking cycle is about to take place. The engine's dual electric starting motors will start the purge cycle and crank over very slowly for about six seconds. Then, two air motors engage the flywheel to bring cranking speed up quickly. 
all this with just the push of a button. If after pushing the engine start button you wish to abort the engine start, you must push the emergency fuel cutoff button, the EFCO. The diesel engine may be started with just the electric motors alone if there is insufficient main reservoir pressure, less than 80 psi, or with the air motors alone if the batteries are weak. Coupling the locomotive's main reservoir equalizing line to another locomotive's main reservoir equalizing line would provide the necessary main reservoir pressure. Oh, and don't forget, if the engine has been shut down for an extended period of time and the engine block is cold, you should open up all the cylinder test cocks and crank the engine over a revolution or two to clear out any fluid that may have accumulated in the cylinders. On the SD80 Mac, you must leave the fuel injection switch in the off position when doing this procedure. Once the battery knife switch is closed and all the circuit breakers in the black area are turned on, including the cab signal, cab display computer, and air brake circuit breakers, the ICE display screens on the control stand should come up. If they don't, check the cab display computer switch or ICE circuit breaker and reset if necessary. And make sure the display select switch on the control stand is in the both position. With the screens up, now we're ready to check our air brake setup. Anytime the EPIC air brake system is powered down or de-energized, an alarm will sound, the brake fail will light, the air brake system will automatically go to trail, and the pneumatic backup system takes over. However, the computer holds in memory the last air brake setup that was in effect prior to powering down. When the system is powered up, the screen will show the last air brake setup. The data fields of the air brake portion of the screen may show asterisks until the computers have gone through their startup tests and have detected the status of the air brake system. Whenever the system is powered down or powered up, EPIC will cause a penalty brake application to occur. If the last air brake setup was lead cut in, when the system is powered up, you will receive a message on the screen to place the automatic brake handle in suppression to recover. If the last air brake setup was trail, you will have to set the system up for lead before you can recover from the penalty. Let's set this locomotive up for lead. This procedure is exactly the same as with our SD60Is. Let's go through it as a review. First, make sure the independent brake handle is in the full application position, and the automatic brake handle is in the release position. Then, press air brake setup. Then, lead trail for lead. Then, accept new. The system will ask you to confirm the setup by pressing Accept New again. Equalizing reservoir pressure will increase and the independent brake is now cut in. Next, we'll cut in the automatic brake by pressing Air Brake Setup. Then, Cut In, Cut Out for Cut In. Accept New and Accept New. If equalizing reservoir pressure must be adjusted, press air brake, then EQ res setup. Use the preset keys or the increase decrease keys to set the pressure. Then press enter and accept new and accept new. The air brakes are now properly set up, and after performing the appropriate tests, we're ready to go. Okay, now let's talk about some of the operating characteristics of this powerful locomotive. Don't worry, the basic principles of train handling will not change with the introduction of the SD80 Mac. Although there are some operating characteristics, particular to AC locomotives, that you will need to be familiar with. Let's talk about some of those characteristics. First off, the SD80 Mac has greater capabilities than anything you've ever handled, especially below 10 miles per hour. 